course, my sister, she's a suffragette, has been for a few years now. She's been campaigning for a long time. She goes off protesting with them. She goes off marching. Recently, she's been breaking windows with them down on Chester Street. She got arrested once. You know, they took her in prison. She went on a hunger strike. She refused to eat a thing. And what they did is they took a tube, they shoved it down her throat, and they force fed her. I tell you, the government's losing a lot of support when they're doing things like that. A lot of support. Which means, of course, the suffragettes are gaining support. My sister reckons that what she's doing is going to make a better life for my daughter. And I'll be very pleased with that because my daughter, she's an intelligent lass, she really is. And uh, I've got to say, she takes after my wife because my wife's very good. She, she, she understands politics a lot better than I do and a lot better than a lot of the men who I work with. And they can vote. So I'm generally in favour of them, but I don't know whether they go as far as I'd like them to. To be honest, I'd like them to, to campaign for everybody getting the vote, all men and all women as well. But, well, they've got one issue, which is uh, fighting for women's votes, so I think, uh, I think I agree with them on the whole, and I think they're going about the right way. These suffragists, they can campaign all they want, but at the end of the day, it's direct action that makes the press, and I think that's what's going to happen, and eventually people are going to look at these suffragettes, and they're going to look at them as, as heroines. Well, there's no way it should be just the uh, educated elite that should be able to vote. I mean, I'm a socialist. I believe that everybody should have the right to vote. All men, all women as well. For it to be just a few people, nah, doesn't make any sense to me at all. We're the ones that work in this country. We should have a say, just the same as the women should have a say as well. Anyway, these leaks are going to clean themselves. Ah yes, on the question of women's suffrage, um, I do believe that women should get the vote. Um, at the moment, uh, there's a terrible inequality for those that do and those that don't. And women's uh, rights are well behind men's rights. And, uh, and I think it's only right that they should get the opportunity to make decisions about um, our, our land and where we're developing. After all, in New Zealand and Australia, uh, the ladies already have the vote. And I only just recently listened to Muriel Matters, um, who was uh, talking in Chesterley Street, who has the vote in Australia currently, and um, who talked very eloquently and uh, has all the issues to hand and is very, very confident in, in uh, what she says and uh, I fully support her and I think women in our society, in our country, should also get those opportunities. Um, I'm not the only man that believes this. The Men's League uh, for Women's Suffrage um, uh, make their views commonly known. Women should get the vote. Um, and it seems to me that there is a, uh, a popular upswelling of opinion uh, that supports this. Um, I've read articles in the Gazette and the Chronicle and the Journal um, about uh, the suffrage movement and uh, they talk about women in a very positive way and it's only a matter of time. It seems that our legal system is very slow and uh, I think eventually uh, women will get the vote. However, I do not agree with the suffragette movement. I think that uh, the Pankhurst gang uh, breaking windows and damaging golf courses and setting off bombs, I hear, is totally against the law and will set the cause back. Uh, my wife and I agree that uh, the positive way forward is a more passive approach, a more law-abiding one, and I'm sure that in time, women will get that opportunity. Well, I think in the end it has to be said that I don't agree with the idea of women's suffrage. Uh, I think women are already represented because Parliament represents communities, not individuals. And I think as well as that, um, if, for example, 
a woman was allowed to vote, then she would simply do as her husband asked her. So I don't think this would be a step forward for democracy at all. I think as well as that, we've got to think that with the right to vote comes certain obligations. For example, man has the obligation to fight in wars. He coordinates heavy industry, such as iron and steel, coal, shipbuilding. And with this obligation comes the privilege or the right to vote. In the end, I have to say that I feel that women are prone to being irrational, are arguably, I think, sometimes prone more than men by a great deal to hysteria, being illogical. Men, I think, are able to make those difficult decisions steadily and with thought and with logic. And therefore, in the end, I have to say that I disagree vehemently with the idea of women's suffrage. And that's all I've got to say, really. I'm a member of the Women's Social and Political Union and welcome to our political meeting. We are led by the Pankhursts and we believe in deeds, not words. We demand political and economic rights and we demand the vote. We will make our demands heard and we will not be ignored any longer. Read our weekly newspaper, Votes for Women. Listen to us at meetings and rallies. March with us in procession to Parliament, visit our shops, wear our badges, sign our petitions. We are organised and determined and do not doubt our devotion. I tell you this, I am willing to risk injury, I am willing to risk imprisonment if it means that our cause is heard. In fact, 1913 has been a busy year for me. I have broken windows, I have poured corrosive liquid in through letterboxes, I have cut telephone wires, I have slashed railway carriage cushions. My colleagues and friends have even set fire to properties. We are willing to do this if it means that our demands are heard and if it helps our cause. If it needs be, I will go to prison. I will be force fed in the name of our cause. Votes for women, deeds, not words. a member of the law-abiding NUWSS. We believe that women should have the vote. After all, we have the responsibility for educating future generations of citizens of this great country. Why can't we vote? Let's face it, only a few short years ago, we could vote for and stand on school boards. Why not extend that to the national government? Having said that, of course, I do not agree with the actions of the suffragettes. I believe that law-abiding citizens will get what they want, what they need, what they deserve, faster. And, of course, we'll be more respected because of that. Who wants to bomb places and break windows? We have a much more civilised way of getting our message across. Only last week I attended a dinner party where we had a very interesting after-dinner speaker who extolled the virtues of women doing what we have said we could do for years and years. We believe that by writing letters and organising petitions and generally explaining to people what we want, what we need, what we deserve, that we will get the vote sooner rather than later. No, I don't think women should have the vote. 
Well, what I think is that, you know, men and women have their different roles. The woman's role is here in the home. And I think that uh, a woman should be here to look after a family, to cook for her husband and her children, and to keep everything running smoothly. You know, the man, my husband, he works in the mine. He goes out there, he's in, out in the political world. And that's why he should have the vote to say what goes on in that political world. I don't live in that kind of world. I also think that, you know, it's um, what God wanted, that women and men are different. You know, he created Adam and Eve uh, with their own roles, and we should follow this. Um, you know, I've seen these suffragettes out in the streets doing their marches, and what I wonder is who's looking after the home when these women are out um, protesting, who's looking after the children, who's looking after their husbands. And more than that, uh, you know, you see these ladies in their fancy hats and their fancy clothes, uh, we real women, you know, we don't have the time or the money to be going out there. And again, you know, he's looking after the children. They can't believe in the husbands at home. The men wouldn't know how to comfort a crying child or how to make the bread. No, I think men and women should keep their separate roles and that uh, I'll just be happy to give my husband my opinion and he can do that for me.